I understand you keep this in your wine cellar. Yes. Have you never thought of using it for anything? No, I don't know what to use it for. Fruit, perhaps? Fruit, I think, is not too bad an idea. Uh, there might be an indication of that at the top here with the fact that if you look there, she's got grapes and vines rather modestly covering all the naughty bits. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder, actually, whether it might not be for roses. Okay. Uh, put a bit of water in there and then rose heads. Have you ever thought of trying it like that? Or, or have you ever put water in it? No. No? The, um, what about dates? Uh, have you any idea on that? No. I don't think it's very old. You don't think it's very old? Right. It's actually turn of the century, this century. And if we have a look underneath here, we'll find the marks, lost them, there they are. What we've got is a crescent, and inside the crescent a crown. Now that tells me straight away that it's German. And that particular marking with the next mark that is there, that number 800, that was introduced in about 1890. So we know we've got a date after that. Uh, and let's put it back up again. Stylistically, it very much agrees with that sort of uh, period, around, around 1900. In England, of course, the, the fact that it has 800 on it is significant because that's for 80% silver content. Now, in England, that, that isn't actually silver. No. Uh, it has to be 92.5%. So, have you any idea on value? Not at all. Not at all. Well, but it's heavy, so there must be a silver value. There's <laughs> quite a lot of silver content in it, of course. Um, I would not be surprised to see it selling at auction for perhaps uh, one and a half thousand pounds, or that's fifteen thousand kroner. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been working with porcelain for 20, 26 years, yes. and I've never seen anything like these two figures. Oh, I've seen things that come from the same factory. I've never seen this particular model. Do you know anything about them? No. Nothing at all? No. I uh, like to see them when I go to an actual about one year ago yes. in Helsingborg and I buy it. And what did they call them there? Uh, devil. They're devils? Yes. And they didn't say where they came from? No. Well, as you will know, you can look all over them, you won't find a mark. No. There's no mark. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> no mark on either piece, but they are signed all over by one of the greatest modelers of porcelain who ever lived, who was called Johann Joachim Kander, and he worked at Meissen. And he worked at Meissen, in fact, from 1731 until 1770-something when he died. And these he certainly made in about 1736. And they are, in fact, Hercules. He's Her he's Hercules supporting something. And in 1736, Candler produced for somebody called Count Sulkowski an enormous dinner service. And it had big tureens and a huge sort of plateau. And on the plateau, there were tureens and pots and things. And I think, I don't know, because I've never seen them. They, as far as I know, they're not in any book. These things, which would have had metal struts probably joining them, and there may have been others, were used to support the big centerpiece of this enormous service, which had his coat of arms and other figures of Hercules on it. So they're very rare. They are incomplete, because we don't know if they're all there, if there's something missing here or what. And they are a little damaged round both heads and on a bit of this figure. May I ask how much you paid for them in your auction? 3,000 Swedish crowns. You paid 3,000 yes. Swedish crowns? Well, I don't think that was too bad, because I, 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 I think the real price for these is between 30 and 50,000 Swedish crowns, which is yeah. three to 5,000 pounds. <laughs> Is it true? Yes. Oh, it's, I don't can believe it.